Couch Potato General Manager back with another video for you. 2022 NFL Draft, seven-round mock draft for the Green Bay Packers, gentlemen. Green Bay, obviously, they traded away Devontae Adams. Uh, they've netted quite a bit of draft capital, so we're not going to waste a whole lot of time here. We're going to get into it and, and let it roll. I love this, Jordan Davis. There's a lave a little bit early. Devin Lloyd in the first round. <laughs> hey, your boy. <laughs> Traylon Burks. <laughs> it is what Traylon it is. Burks, man. W would you trade up and grab Jahan Dotson? Just double down? No. Okay. I like I like Dotson a lot. He's in my he's, he's I, in I my like Dotson a lot too. I like Dotson a lot too. I, I think I think if Dotson is there, I mean we can have the conversation about doubling up, but I'm not trading up to ensure that I get Dotson as well. Traylon <laughs> Burks is the pick. Yeah. All right. So, obviously, mm -hmm. Dotson's available to us. We can certainly go that direction. Linderbaum. Um, I think, yeah, the interior guys went early. Linderbaum, to me, he's a center, not unlike Josh Myers, the incumbent. So, I don't know that going in that direction makes a lot of sense. I think just a few picks ahead, Kenyon Green and uh, Zion went. So, those yeah. are guys that I would have considered at 28 in terms of the offensive line. The linebacker, they could actually use a guy. Safety. Is it too soon to go safety? Got guys that are still under contract. It's just that they're expiring. Adrian Amos and Darnell Sapp. Well, Devontae Adams didn't want to play for Green Bay at the end of the day. Him and Derek Carr are homeboys. He actually lives in Las Vegas, um, has a home out there. It was never going to be a thing for him to stay there in Green Bay. They, they dropped the ball by letting him by end up franchise tagging him, and they had to trade him away. And I think you have to double down. We got to secure this thing. Biggest reason why you lost in the playoff game was because it was Devontae Adams and um, Devontae Adams. That was it. So, you know, uh, they, they, they needed a, they need some more complimentary weapons on the yeah. to begin with. And then, of course, losing Devontae Adams, it creates a huge hole. And I believe the way this board has shaken out, it, it lends itself to doubling down. I think if you have a Zion Johnson or Kenyon Green, I think that's a real consideration at this point. Yeah, because not only um, the receivers, man, the tight ends is still a little question mark. They need somebody to catch the ball. They need a couple pieces. So, yeah, I, I, I like the, uh, the Dotson pick here. Two excitable players with the ball in their yeah. hands. Aaron Rodgers will be very happy. Yeah. So hopefully, the safety fall to us. Let this board come to us. See how how it all works out. Yeah, I think the safety will be there for us. Okay. So Petrie and Brisker are on the board here. Um, we do have the 59th overall pick as well. Uh, let's take a look at the interior of the offensive line. These three players all intrigue me. Yeah. Uh, Sawyer in, in particular, I think he's a very good player. I like Cole Strange too. Cole Strange is solid. Even Ed Ingram is a guy that I would I would consider. Um, so but but we need to get one of these three guys. Um, I that's that's my thought process. One of these three guys here. So so with, with the safety, because we were talking about it earlier. Um, do we think they don't sign one of them back, or we think it's just one going to come back? I think I think then... I, I think best case scenario one comes back because you got to you got to probably extend Jair Alexander as well. Right, right. So right. At, at best case scenario, I think is one comes back. I don't think both are going to come back. And what's the next pick? 59th. Oh, all right. So we might be able to still scoop a guy, but if we lose both Petrie and Brisker. Yeah. Now we take a significant hit in the safety position. Yeah, I think we got to grab one. Yeah. We got to grab one. Um, I kind of like Brisker a little bit better because um, they, they got better. three. They got three corners that could cover. You know, Petrie's more of a, a cover safety. Mm -hmm. um, Brisker's more a guy that can play up top or in the box. So even though I, I'm, a, you know, Petrie's one of my 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 draft crushes, but they could use this guy too. They could I use that too. Yeah, damn, bro. All right, uh, Green Bay Packer fan, uh, what are you saying? What are you doing here? What are you doing here with, with what's already been drafted? You don't like the Dean Lowry, Kenny Clark, Jaron Reed? It's um, okay. He, it's okay. Yeah. Expiring contracts, right? I think you're dealing with some expiring yeah. contracts there as well. That, that's really what it is in Green Bay. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is, is You're kind of leveraging, okay, we want to maximize what we have here with Aaron Rodgers, of course. But he's in the fold. He's in the fold. Um, but, but beyond 2022, th this team could look very different. So, so 
let's leverage this this draft capital, this substantial draft capital, to prepare ourselves so that we're not we're not falling completely off up against it. You know what I'm saying? Trying to retain all of this talent. Like I said, they're gonna have to extend Jair Alexander. They gotta get that done. Um, I'd like to see them bring back Adrian Amos. Um, you know, Rashawn Gary is coming up here as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. After his breakout campaign. So the decisions are going to have to be made. So you're going to have to, to kind, of, kind of get out in front of it in this particular draft class, I think. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, two positions I, I like here is safety and offensive line. I think offensive line is probably a, a more uh, imminent need. We, yeah. we, we need that right away. I think uh, to protect the franchise. I think that that offensive line. I think you can go at fifty nine and get 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 one. I think one of those guys will still be there. Fifty nine. So I think fifty three is either. I, I love Travis Jones here, but we're passing up on a safety if we do that. I think offensive line is going to be. It's going to be there at fifty nine. Yeah, it's going to be there. So that'll be yeah. the pick at fifty nine. But fifty three is we either going safety or we're going Travis Jones. Okay, so Brisker Brisker is is the preferred safety in this particular case. Yeah. And then we have Travis Jones as well. Let's let's take a look at who's to follow. We have, or could we get that that guard if if we're depending on how things shake out? You know, Travis Jones may not be available, but if we're on fifty nine and Travis Jones is still on the board, let's say let's say we let's, go let's, let's, okay. Could we package our third round pick and perhaps one of the two fours to to, to move up to get that guard, a guard that we covet potentially? Yeah, you know, I think I think that's something that we should consider. I guess the question here for me is, who do we prioritize? Do we prioritize Brisker or Travis Jones? Again, you already have your starters in place. At yeah, both, right. at both positions. Well, well, both positions. Forward. Well, it would probably be the best player then. And I, I, I and uh, Travis Jones, he's probably the the better player. Mm-hmm. You know, I like Brisker a lot. <clears throat> yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you're rolling the dice, man. <laughs> I, 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 I would say Travis Jones as well. Uh, for those of you, obviously, he's coming from UConn. Um, and uh, he's, I mean, he, he's a lot to deal with, man. As an offensive line, he's strong, he's powerful, um, he's explosive at the snap. Um, he just didn't get a lot of love because he's coming from UConn. I mean, sometimes he's just the school you go to, you know? And, and every tape that I watched of him, he was dominating, man. Double team, triple team. You couldn't sing. I wouldn't single them up. You'd fool if you do that. Um, and teams knew they, they had to. Um, they had to watch him. He was the one player on that defense you had to be careful of. And the only guy who had any any you know, I would say uh, quasi consistent, yeah. semi consistent success against him in Mobile was Zion Johnson, who was a first round yep. pick. Yeah. You know, he, he's probably my top interior player um, outside of Tyler Linderbaum. But in terms of the guards, I think Zion Johnson is, is the cream of the crop. So. Um, yeah, I, I I I agree with the Travis Jones selection here. We'll see what shakes out here with the 59th overall pick. It's especially defensive line is a is a position where you, you're gonna need a rotation absolutely more than more than your safety position. So absolutely. yeah, let's prioritize uh, defensive line and, and go with Travis Jones. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, oh. so interestingly enough. Brisker is available to us, so that that will be our pick. Now it's a question about securing the interior offensive lineman here. Uh, let's let's take a look. Did the Bucks go? Nope, nope. They went Kyrie Elam. They're probably gonna go one of the interior guys. Yeah, I think I think we would need to we would need to secure the 60th pick to ensure we'll we get we Sawyer if that's the guy that we really want. So, that, so let's have that conversation. Brisker obviously is the next pick, but who's the guard that we want the most of these of these three here in particular? Well, I, I like um, Sean Ryan. I like Sawyer. Um, there's not a whole lot separate them from me. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, if, if we miss out on Sawyer, I'm, I'm good with with Sean Ryan. I think Sawyer is the better player, but I'm good with with either or. It makes no difference. Okay, so I think, so, think Eddie was pretty good too. So. so we'll 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 let it run, and then once one of them comes off the board, we'll see. I like Cole Strange a lot, man. Uh, I know I mentioned that earlier. I know he said he, he's a center, but he he has guard uh, versatility also. I think he's pic- he's picture perfect for the zone running scheme that Green Bay does. 
he could get to the second level. I, I worry about his. No, I'm just going to say my, I'm saying my piece. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. I understand, I, and I and I think Cole Strange is a good player as well. I just think he's a center. You know, uh, it, it'd be you know at the NFL level, at the NFL, at the level, NFL I, level. I worry about his. his, 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 his that, that's what showed up. That's what showed up. He competes. I love him. He don't wear gloves. I, I love it. He had the old school, uh, you know, face Greasy mask, the cage, and everything. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. He's scrappy, but. I worry about his functional strength. Now, the system, the system could help with that. Dean fits him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And under those circumstances, that that would be the, the system. If he falls, if he falls, right. maybe, yeah. you know, yeah, we could target okay. him up. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it and then go from there. So, Juan Brisker, let's go back to interior. Thomas. Oh, you boy. Yeah, so All right. Yeah. And so up, Sawyer and Parham are gone. At least it's with Sean Ryan and Cole Strange here. All right. Let's you, see. What, when do we pick next? Uh, we're going to have to trade up in all likelihood. 92. Oh, 92? Yeah, we got to trade So let's just keep an eye on it. <laughs> all right. There it is. Hurt. My love. My heart. My heart. <laughs> All right, so Sean Ryan goes to the Baltimore Ravens. We're going to opt for Cole Strange here. I think he can give us a little something behind Josh Myers at center, but but and, and I actually consider him more of a center in, in your traditional gap schemes, but in a zone scheme, I think Strange could, could certainly play guard. So we're going to bring him, add him. He he competed at the Senior Bowl. I, I, I worry about his functional strength a little bit, but I think he can add some, some girth, and he's a fairly decent athlete for a guy his size. All right, so we need to we need to work it out with the Vikings. Divisional. Yeah, that's the other thing. And I just want y'all to know, I fought I fought for Sean Ryan. Anybody down there uh, in the comment section watching the video, man, I fought for him, but I didn't win, as you can tell. I wonder if the Vikings would go in that direction. Who do I use? They, so they, they, they run they, their own scheme too. If they get right. Cole Strange, though, is Ed Ingram not a guy? Is that not? Ingo's more Durgis. of a power scheme, but, yeah. but Ingram scheme. is an okay. option. He's an option. Um, yeah. You want to avoid the, the whole trading with the division and just go with the Browns? You can uh, do that. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully they don't pick him because they run that same scheme, right? I don't know. All right, we're going to part with... Uh, our third round pick as well as a fifth round selection to see if we can position ourselves to perhaps grab Cole Strange here. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> they run the same scheme, man. <laughs> yeah. We miscalculated on the, the guard position here with Sean Ryan Cole Strange going back to back picks here. Um, we're going to offer Ed Ingram. Not an ideal fit for the zone scheme, but we like what he does in terms of pass protection. Keep Aaron Rodgers upright. That's hurt, bro. Like, that's like. <laughs> it's tough. It's, it, it was a tough yeah, back, 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 back to back yeah. picks. Well, it's because yeah. it's you get you gave up a pick to move up and didn't yeah. get your, and then didn't get get your guy. guy. And then yeah. get your guy. Say la vie, yeah. bro. Say yeah. la vie. I like Ed Ingram. Ed Ingram was another player at the Super Bowl, not unlike uh, Cole Strange, Jamar Sellier. They all they all demonstrated, you know, ability. I think that the thing about Ingram versus Sean Ryan and Cole Strange is the is the schematic fit. I think Strange probably was the best fit from that perspective, but Sean Ryan I think is a better fit than Ingram is. I think Ingram is probably your best pass protector among the group, though. You know, I should have fought for. I should have fought for Greg Delucci, tight end from UCLA. Uh, I think he's a good mix of uh, what you want from the tight end position. Um, I think he's been a guy who uh, you could see be a, a future star in the league. But you know, I got locked into the to the offensive line. Uh, Are we trying to we trying to interior. create some some rushing lanes and protect the quarterback? So. And, and, and it appears that they need two starters. So I think Eddie going to come in and, and, and compete immediately. Um, we were thinking at the at the, the beginning of the conversation, we were thinking, you know, one of these two picks was going to be the guard, but we ended up with Travis Jones, Jaquan Brisk. I ain't mad at it. Um, can't win them all, bro. Nope. Mm -hmm. Can't win them all. All right. 
So here we are back on the clock. We have a pair of fourth round selections. We did trade away the fifth rounder to move up. Narrowly missed out on a couple of guards that we liked. But Ed Ingram, like I said, is a quality pass protector. And, and hopefully we can get him to a point where he is he's serviceable in terms of the zone rushing attack. What, what, what direction do you guys want to go in here? Uh, I think they, 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 they use an edge rusher. Um, Preston Smith's getting a little older. I know you got Rashawn Gary, but you lost uh, Zendarius White, uh, Zendarius Smith off the edge. So I think an edge is in play here. Uh, they could use another linebacker, inside linebacker, tight end, more O line, more D line, a lot of different directions. With this particular selection, we're going to opt for Jesse Lucada. Uh, there's some limitations in terms of athleticism, but he, he's kind of one of your your, your uh, throwback throwback edge rushers in an odd man front. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, effort, physicality, bringing to the table. The football characters off the charts. I think you 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 add him in special teams. He certainly can make a difference there. The question is, is it too early for him? I'm, I'm not sure that it is, um, one way or the other. But Let's go with Jesse Lucada here and then see see what things how things shake out with the 140th overall pick. So after Lucada, we had Bo Melton, Lindstrom, Neil Farrell Jr., um, Obanaya, Lily Zappi, Siddha Smith, Braxton Jones. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the next seven picks were all at the Senior Bowl. Uh, sure. All right. So this is our final pick in the fourth round. What say you, Jen? You want to get your drum forward, bro? You want to wait to the fifth? I'm not worried <laughs> about running back. Not that enough for Green Bay. Let's start a tight end real quick. I think there's a, there's a little bit more juice with Kohler, um, but Ferguson is probably the um, the safer. He has the, the highest floor out of everybody that's left. Because you, you, you know exactly what you're getting with him. Ain't pulling no punches. It's not gonna be a disguise. He is what he is. All right, we're gonna stay in state with our next pick, and we're gonna grab Jake Ferguson. Just not certain. Just not certain what what we're getting out of the tight end position. Of course, you, you know what you're gonna get out of Mercedes Lewis, right? You know that. Um, you have uh, Tanya coming off the injury, and then of course uh, Deguara. Uh, we could see an increased role, but I'm not. I'm not betting on it. They they did invest day two draft capital into him so hopefully hopefully for the front office's sake we do but we'll add jake ferguson to the mix here give another option here in the passing game and, and also an extension of your offensive line and just to speak to the other tight ends um jelani woods who blew it up at the combine is a, is a, is a just a freak in nature um jalen wide um he just didn't show up this season like i don't, I don't know what happened i was looking forward to him and it just i didn't see it um, and so he kind of fell off uh, out of sight, out of mind. And Charlie Kohler, who um, I think he, he's uh, a guy who can who can win definitely in the red zone. Um, but I think that Ferguson just has that higher floor, safer player, and you know what you're getting with him. All right, we have a trio of seventh round selections, so we won't be picking for quite some time. Let's talk about what we've done so far to this point here, Headley. Yeah, man. So we, we doubled out at wide receiver, you know, big loss in Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers. So we added the Trey Long Burks, Jahan Dotson. I think those receivers complement each other really well. They're going to be the wide receiver one and two of the football team and probably a Lazard out there to go with those two. Um, you, we went big in the middle. There's a lot of expiring contracts on the Packers defensive line and safety with the next two picks in Travis Jones Jones and Jaquan Brisker. Uh, I think both of those guys could carve out starting positions as early as this season, if not next season, once contracts start to expire. Uh, the next pick, we went uh, into your offensive line. We were looking at some some guys that probably fit the, the Packers scheme a little better. Uh, we got we got sniped, man, back-to-back -back picks. Uh, Minnesota Vikings got us on, on the Cole Strange pick. So we opted with Ed Ingram. Um, he offers good pass protection, so you, know, you always got to protect the franchise in uh, Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. Next, we got Lucada. Um, we like him off the edge. And then Jake Ferguson to give another weapon to uh, Aaron Rodgers and help uh, protect him as well, help in the run game. All right. We are now in the seventh round. 
in which we actually have three draft selections in the seventh round. So we're looking for upside. We're looking for traits. We're looking for sparky athleticism. Uh, the analytics darlings. That's that's what we're kind of targeting at this juncture. Not necessarily trying to fill the need. Um, best player available certainly is part of the conversation as well. But you're, but you're looking for the guys who who have a unique athletic profile. So with this next selection, we're going to go with Kieran Johnson, uh, another participant from the Senior Bowl. He's a bit of a tweener. In fact, he's kind of moonlight. He moonlighted between inside linebacker and edge rusher. And his, his tape, his college tape, is probably better on the edge. Uh, but we could use some additional depth at inside linebacker. And then, and of course, with, with his flexibility as a pass rusher, he can moonlight as a pass rusher in, in certain situations. So, Kieran Johnson with our first of three seven, seventh round draft picks. Let's see where that puts us here in a moment. Uh, a couple of defenders here that, or, or rather, got another defender that we have our eye on. Let's see if he's available to us. Here, let's go get Jatari Card. I, I alluded to him previously. Again, perhaps not an ideal fit for the scheme, but I, I love what he does there in the interior. He and Ed Ingram, in, in, in more of a gap scheme, probably would be terrific young players to be considered. But again, we want to protect our quarterback, and I think they can do that. I think they can certainly hold up in the interior and protect Aaron Rodgers. So Jatari Carter from Southern is the next selection, another senior bowl participant. Green Bay, um, they're one of the teams to develop offensive linemen as well. That's a good um, point. Yeah. Yep. And with our final pick, we're going to give some love to a, so yet another senior bowl participant. I actually thought he played really well. You know, the step up in competition mm -hmm. wasn't an issue for him. Um, he, he's more of a man corner, although although he could use some more functional strength. He's more of a man corner. Gregory Jr. from, I'm, I'm, I apologize for butchering this, but I'm going to call it Ochita Baptist. All right, small school, but small he, school. He, he certainly he certainly looked the part. He looked the part in Mobile, so we're we're gonna give him a shot here at the end of the seventh round. And hey man, if Jim Nagy found you, bro, you're yeah. probably a player that yeah. should be playing in the league, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, probably a priority free agent in all likelihood. Yeah. But oh, definitely, but definitely. certainly a guy that that impressed, as far as I'm concerned. Here's what we've done with the 2022 Green Bay Packers mock draft a pair of receivers at the top travis jones jaquan brisker uh guys that we envision as starters ed ingram to help out the interior of that offensive line jesse lucata we love the football character jake ferguson to help out that tight end room Kieran johnson a bit of a tweener but i think he can help inside and outside at the second level followed by jatari carter and gregory jr a couple of smaller school players that definitely demonstrated that they belong in mobile so that's gonna do it that's gonna do it for headley Drew, this is Juice, signing off.